Miss Ann Miles compares Mary Dyer to Esther in the Bible as a woman who stood before a legal body or ruler and prevented the persecution and death of her people under an unjust law. Though this is a significant event in American history and the importance shouldn't be shied away from of Miss Dyer's death and the rescinding of some of these laws, it is important to look at the context of when this happened and how much weight this argument should be provided now in contemporary circles. One of the main arguments against the level of weight to this argument is by Jonathan Field saying that the Antinonian contra controversy was not as big as it seemed due to reading of John Winthrop's journal itself showing multiple different facets taking place during that time, including the Pequot War, shipwrecks, and even attacks by wild animals. Also, it shows that the debates that occurred with Anne Hutchinson were similar in effect to Thomas Hooker, who was exiled to Connecticut, or excuse me, moved to Connecticut while Roger Williams was exiled to Rhode Island from the colony. It seems that Presbyterians and Independents increased the amount of scandal and controversy with the situation, making it seem more of a crisis for the colony that could make or break it vice, it just being another debate that ended up showing that the Puritans were going to keep their way of life within their colony as best they could. Now with Miss Dyer, it's very interesting to note that she kind of followed the same aspect of Miss Anne Hutchison, aside from the fact that she did continue to repeatedly violate the anti-Quaker laws, uh, which she converted to in 1650s, in the 1650s. She returned to Massachusetts from England, was banished, returned again with a few compatriots, was banished again, returned again, her compatriots were hung, she was banished one final time, and then when she returned a fourth time, she was hung. This was very scandalous at the time because women are not seen as ones who are normally hung or executed for violation of the laws. In fact, she was spared the first time because of the amount of scandal that would have surrounded it. After her death, her compatriots sent a petition to Charles II to have him change the laws in the Massachusetts Bay Colony. What's interesting to note, though, is that this might well have been done by the king to reassert his authority over the colonies. The reason that's being stated is, during the time of Mary Dyer's return to Massachusetts from England and her subsequent trials and death, the English Civil War was still ongoing at this time. Massachusetts Bay supported the parliamentarians within England, whereas southern colonies supported the royalists. During the protectorate years, uh, Oliver Cromwell actually was going to dispatch the English fleet to capture uh, royalist colonies. So with a new monarch being installed on the throne, it is likely that anything that would lessen the Puritans' power or Massachusetts' overall governance he would agree to at that time, though at this time I do not have any documentation to back this up. This is inference based on timing and allegiances during that time. Again, not to minimize Miss Dyer's importance to the overall removal of these laws and what she did based on her faith, but to look at it as a larger context, it is a an event that helped move everything forward at a time when multiple threads were being pulled in the same direction. Mary Dyer's life and death are significant to the retraction of anti-Quaker laws in Massachusetts Bay Colony as well as eventually leading to toleration of other religious sects within the colony itself. However, to see it as a, an event that occurred within a vacuum is disingenuous. Again, this is not to diminish or minimize her efforts and the event of her death, but looking at the English Civil War taking place and other debates and prominent figures such as Thomas Hooker and Roger Williams being removed from the colony more lines up with a 
number of external and internal factors that coalesced together creating this event that was a linchpin to the beginning of the <clears throat> removal of these laws and moving towards toleration.